Hey everyone, welcome back to Workshop Quick Takes. Today I'm tackling a common failure problem on Jeeps with the 4.0 inline six, uh, in particular the XJ series Cherokee I have, and that is the oil filter does not screw directly onto the side of the engine due to clearance issues. So what Chrysler provided was a right angle adapter that allows it to unscrew and remove from the back. Unfortunately, that adapter does have O-rings in it, and after 200,000 odd miles in 20 years, those O-rings fail. One symptom, of course, will be oil leakage from right around in that area, accumulating on the bottom side of the bracket. Another is that you may see oil dripping from the back of your bell housing, and it looks like it's got a rear main seal out. Well, let's clarify. You own a 20-year-old Jeep. If you haven't done the rear main seal, then you've got a rear main seal. But, and you're confident that that's not where it's coming from, it might just be that the oil is leaking out of that right angle bracket and following its way back and then dripping off the bottom of the Jeep there. So step one, I've slid the uh, oil catch pan underneath here because we are going to release some. Now one of the big problems with removing this bracket is if you look down here, you've got barely two inches of clearance, if that. And you may even find it necessary to remove this particular bolt from the engine mount bracket here in order to get at this. But many, many Torx socket adapters will not fit down there. Okay, so these here are what we ended up using to get the job done. This is a set of low profile Torx bits found at the auto parts store. Conveniently, the largest size is a T60 and that is the one we needed. So the T60 in combination with this ratchet, which has an average thickness of head, I guess, but it is flexible, came in under the two inches we needed to fit it down there. You can see that right there, I mean, just barely. Harbor Freight, where we got this ratchet, has since come out with this. Still in the Pittsburgh brand, pretty cheap, doesn't feel very solid at all, but what it is, is the hardware of a ratcheting wrench. But instead of having a 12 point opening on both ends, it has a quarter inch ratchet driver on this end with a flexible head and a 3 8 inch on this end. And as you can see, it's even thinner, so it can get into places that are just a little bit tighter. If we'd had this, we definitely would have used it. Okay, so the little guy we're going for, of course, is right down in here, but you'll notice we're working perilously close to an exposed terminal on the starter over there. Even though a lot of people do successfully work this job, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the negative battery posts just to make sure I don't have any unhappy accidents down there. Now I've previously replaced these battery posts, so mine happens to disconnect with either a 13 mil or a half inch socket, whichever you got available. Yours may be different. Tuck that out of the way, and hopefully now we're not gonna have any issues down there. Next step, we need to work out our socket size down here. It's tricky to get in there, but that is in fact a T60 Torx. You can choose when to remove the oil filter before or after. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on for now just as a handle, but I will be changing that out. I'm also going to put a large screwdriver down there just to make sure that thing does not pop out and strip while I'm trying to turn it. I'm also gonna need to do a bit of a cheater bar on here, I think. So. That is baked in there. But I think I heard a turn. Okay. Had some torque on it, as you would hope, but it is turning now. You can see it's definitely now loose. It's not ideal, but I'm gonna try to that at that from underneath. In spite of the transmission cooler lines in the way, I can actually see it from down here, so. Okay, and she's loose. And that O-ring is hard as a rock. Note that alignment pin, that's gonna be useful to us when we put this thing back on. Not much else to see there, it's gonna be kind of filthy. It'll take some brake cleaner to get that uh, all out of there, but well, let's keep on the bench and give it a shot. Okay, now that that step's completed, I've brought it over here to the workbench, and this will go much easier with a couple clean cartons for sorting things. First off, make sure you have a gasket kit. You're gonna to need to take your old gaskets and make sure that they actually line up in size-wise, and this one does. Now, I don't know if that one there started life a rectangular like that. I thought it's supposed to be a circular O-ring, so if that's the case, see how hard and brittle that is too. It's no wonder that this thing's leaking. The oil filter here is still full of oil, so this will have to be opened carefully. And there comes a bunch of oil, as you'd expect. Okay, so there's the oil filter housing, and that part's ordinary enough. Yeah, it's, it's not coming out easily, but I mean, there's a couple spots right there in particular where you can see that oil baked in underneath where the ring should be. That shouldn't be there. That should be stopping the oil from getting through. So that's probably one of the areas where it's been seeping. But apparently this 
needs to push through because there's a couple more O-rings in here that are going to have to be changed. Well, we could try this the old-fashioned way. I mean, this is wood. It's not going to bash the metal. And it worked. Yeah, it's kind of looking at that in there. Two more O-rings. These here are in a little better shape, but they're still pretty flat. Those are a little softer, so they aren't completely fried. But, you know. Oh, yeah, that one there. <laughs> That's a little brittle. Feels like it just wants to snap and break. Okay, so let's figure out which of these we're re using on the uh, replacement. This one for sure. And again, always check your diameters just to... That one should fit fine. And it do. I'll bet this big one is that big one. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Okay, so that one's gonna go on there. Just like that. And then it looks like it's probably gonna be this small one that replaces the other. Yeah, that one's nice and flexible. That one there's going crackly. Make sure that when you're putting these on, you keep a firm grip on them. Don't have them accidentally have one of them snap off like a rubber band and fly across the room. That's what it should look like. And I'll go ahead and just use a little bit of the oil off here to pre-lube these rings so I don't rip them up putting them in. O-rings are meant to seal as they are by compression. Um, they're not meant to be secured down with black RTV or something like that. We'll just put it back together the way the factory intended and hope it works. Now that's supposed to snap in, and it do. If it requires excessive force and just keeps bouncing back at you, maybe one of your O-rings is the wrong size, double check, because if you force the wrong size O-ring in there, there won't be enough chamber for it to operate in, and you can tear it. And I'll go ahead and lubricate this with just a little bit of oil, because again, it's going to rub against the side of the engine there while I reattach it. Okay, one more thing to do down here, if we reattach anything, spray a little brake cleaner on a cloth and make sure that we have the cleanest possible mating surface here. Definitely feel some gunk and roughness down there, and we don't want that left behind. I'm gonna try this Scotch-Brite pad and just see if I can work off a little bit more crud down here. Sandpaper I've used before on like water pumps, and that's real to get those gaskets cleaned up, and that's not necessarily the wisest possible thing, but it works. But down here, any gunk I create that falls back in will end up in the engine oil, and hopefully it isn't much because this thing is canted downward. Okay, we're ready to reinstall the adapter, which I'm gonna do this time without the filter on. Looks like with the oil lubrication in those O-rings, I can just turn this by hand, which is good, because I'm gonna need to be able to do that to get that thread started. I don't know how much difference it makes given that this is going up into an area that was very recently filled with oil, but I'll try putting just a tiny bit of blue thread rocker on here to help secure those in. That's roughly where it goes. I can feel the threads binding in. There we go. Making my own ratchet here. That seems to be doing the trick. At least until we get to the point where that pin becomes relevant. So in case it's not obvious what I'm doing, there's enough friction on the uh, O-rings in here that when I pull this up, I'm turning it to the right. And then I put my finger here and hold it so I can turn it back again. And now we're starting to bind into that pin, so I don't think that's going to be the end of that. Okay, we're just about there. Let's not try and twist anymore. We're on the alignment pin. And I think I feel the O-ring tensioning up. So for final torquing, I'm going to try from the bottom to see if I can finish putting a full torque on that. That's pretty tight. We'll put an oil filter on now and check it. Now, unfortunately, I can't properly pre-fill this filter because it installs sideways, but that doesn't mean I can't put some oil in it. That'll at least help it with that uh, first start. Let that soak the media a bit. Make sure it's not running out yet, and it's not. These things hold a lot more oil than you'd think. A little clean oil on the ring. That's hand tight. I know I'm gonna need a little bit of makeup oil. So I might as well just pour it in now. Last step before I can start this thing, I should probably reattach my battery cable. Should be ready to test fire it. And I got a camera still down there, so 
If it starts spurting oil, we'll catch it all on film, but I hope not. That should solve the problem for a while. Okay, the oil pressure gauge is holding at 55. And I'm not seeing any spurting or spraying, nothing dripping. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us again on Workshop Quick Takes. That's another one of those little projects you can do at home and it's pretty low risk as long as you test it afterwards to make sure you're not leaking oil from the replaced gaskets. The reason we did spend a little bit of time early on talking about tools is because that will be the one thing that gets you on this. Standard socketed torque set like this one, just this piece alone is about two inches thick and then you've got the head of the ratchet, won't fit down in there. So you are going to have to work out something like what we did or somebody, I think it is snap-on but I don't have a part number, sell something that looks like our low profile Torx bit, but instead of being a socket on the back half, it looks like a six point bolt head. And so then you just slide it into the wrench and manipulate it down in there that way. Prep for this one so that you have the right tools or you're just gonna get stuck. Otherwise, you can do this. And there's a lot of other projects that maybe your car needs too. So hopefully you got some inspiration. Go do those too. Get that thing working the way you want it to. Thanks for joining us again today. We'll see you again next time, whenever that is. Has anyone seen my phone?